OM system announced that they will temporarily suspend orders for the Pen EP7 as well as the OMD EM10 Mark IV. And I think previously there was an announcement that these orders would be delayed, but now they seem to have suspended it altogether. So I think when OM system took over Olympus's camera division, the main goal was to just focus on the high-end cameras like the EM1 Mark III and the EM1X. So I think they started to wind down the operations for all the lower end cameras. And now there seems to have been a temporary trend in buying these type of cameras. So the sales have gone up, but obviously that they can't utilize it because they've winded down the business side of things in that area. Seven Artisans announced the new 50mm f1.4 tilt shift lens. And this comes in a micro four third mount as well, as well as a few other different mount types. Sigma has temporarily suspended orders for their entire DC DN lens lineup, which includes some micro four thirds mount lenses as well. There was an interview with the Sigma CEO in relation to the Foveon sensor that they're developing. And from what I've mentioned, there's no significant progress since last year. So it's still in design stages and there's been some delays. So they went back and forth with changing the design and going back to the manufacturer to manufacture another prototype. And a few things they admitted about the new sensor is that its low light performance won't be as good as Bayer sensors and its advantages are less significant now due to the recent advances in CMOS sensors. But where they think it will have an advantage is in relation to tonality and dynamic range. And it would be interesting to see whether Foveon sensors will come to micro four third cameras in the same way that Sigma is producing lenses for a lot of micro four third cameras. SoundDisk announced the 4 terabyte SD card. So that's an interesting thing because that means in your Olympus camera or Panasonic camera, you can have two 4 terabyte SD cards, which gives you 8 terabytes of storage. So that means you can use your camera with 8 terabytes of storage without needing to change SD cards or delete files for at least one week of work. Insta360 announced their new version of the camera, so the Insta360 X4, and it's larger and heavier than the previous version. So the previous version was the X3, and I think there's two problems with the size and weight of the new one. So one is when you have it on top of a pole, it's a lot heavier, so whatever stick you have will bend a little bit more, so that will be a little bit less stable. And also the fact that it's larger means that it will be affected by wind more. So if you have it on a stick or you have it mounted anywhere, the wind will impact it more. The Insta360 X4 doesn't have live streaming functionality yet, but from what they've mentioned, they're planning to bring live streaming functionality to this camera as well after some firmware updates in the future. The US-based National Association of Broadcasters show for 2024 took place this week, and I didn't come across any significant Micro Four Thirds related cameras or peripherals, nor did I see anything significantly new for live streaming. But there was one interesting thing that I came across, which was FreeFly System announced a new high-speed camera with an EF mount, which has electronic contacts, so the lens can be controlled electronically. These cameras are typically not for consumers because they cost over 20,000, and they seem to have a lot of peculiarities to them. So for example, this one is a box camera, and it seems to only work with iPhone, iPad, and Mac OS. So if you buy the camera, you need to also buy an iPhone or an iPad to be able to control the camera effectively. So this is one of the things I don't like when buying certain equipment is that you buy the equipment and it's not ready to function. You have to buy additional things. Uh, for example, in this case, it doesn't work with Android devices or PCs or different operating systems. So you have to buy a specific thing like an iPhone or iPad, and then you need to install it and get everything to work. So the investment in time and money becomes a lot more than just buying a system that works out of the box. So I think this is not really for consumers, it's more for companies that are investing heavily in actually running these things for a sporting event or, I don't know, wildlife or engineering purposes.